Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am the anti-hipster indie nerd and today we're doing another iceberg. You guys absolutely blew up the disturbing songs iceberg and I thank you for that. Appreciate all the love, all the subs, all the likes lately. It's made me feel great. So inspired by that is this disturbing music videos iceberg by you slash Kino Sick on Reddit. Appreciate the iceberg. Let's hop right into this thing. Tier 1, the sky, let's go. Aphex Twin, come to daddy. This video opens up with a sort of desolate, gray, crappy looking city, but it's nothing too out of the ordinary yet. Soon afterwards, we see an old woman walking a dog through this city. The dog decides to do its business and pee next to an old broken TV, and afterwards there's a sort of disturbance in the air. The TV eventually comes on and some weird blue distorted dude on the TV keeps screaming out, I want your soul, which really startles the dog and the old woman. As the music gets more intense, the old lady is obviously traumatized, so she tries to escape, but instead she's faced with this batch of a bunch of young children with the face of Richard D. James, Aphex Twin himself. And I actually read that this is not CGI, these are literally like model heads of <laughs> Richard D. James, which is crazy. So as this weird TV dude keeps saying, I want your soul, eventually he says, come to daddy, in which all these demon kids run up to him like he's their master. The kids wreak havoc everywhere, vandalizing everything in sight, and eventually we transition back to this TV. The master saying, I want your soul, literally comes out of the TV like he's some sort of gooey white figure. It's like if like a blob of clay were literally to come out of your TV is what it looked like to me. And while this is happening, the old lady from earlier just watches in complete shock and disbelief. Finally, we see this I want your soul guy come out in his full flesh and he looks like some sort of goblin demon. Once he's out of his TV, he screams right into the old lady's face at the top of his lungs and she's just like blown back like this. At the very end, the goblin demon is shown smiling, all of the Richard D. James children around it, and that's pretty much where this thing ends. I have to say that I absolutely love this video. I thought it was fantastic, but let's continue. Fever Ray, If I Had a Heart. This song is the theme song for Vikings, so I'm sure most of you have heard it before, even if you've never heard the name. And I don't find this one very disturbing, it's just a lot more on the abstract side. It starts with a faint flame, and as we zoom in, we see a boat with a bunch of people on it. And as this boat goes down the river, we see these creepy figures on the shore, but the people on the boat don't really seem to mind. Then they get to their destination, which was a large white mansion, and right outside the mansion are a ton of dead bodies, like in the courtyard and stuff. The camera explores the mansion, there's more dead bodies in there, and eventually we see this skull looking woman, and she's holding what looks to me like a dove, but I'm not sure, and I think it is like a dead dove to symbolize the death of love, that's just my theory. At the very end we see two young children rowing the boat, but they sort of fade out and like disappear with a fade effect, and then the video ends with a far shot of another canoe, but we never see who's in the canoe. So there's probably a lot to speculate about this video, I'm sure there's a lot of theories about the meaning. I'm not really sure what I got out of it other than the death of love and possibly the children disappearing could be like a metaphor for the loss of innocence. Depeche Mode, wrong. This starts with a car moving backwards on a rain soaked highway and eventually we see inside to see a passed out person in the passenger seat. The car crashes into a couple other parked cars along the sidewalk and eventually our main character wakes up and we can see the main character has a sort of deformed face but we quickly realize it's actually a skin mask he's wearing and also other parts of his body are covered in duct tape. The driver tries to shake off the mask and get this tape off but he can't so people start looking at him weird and he's freaking out now trying to get this stuff off. He then slams into a person, probably killing them, and from here we can see this video is all about the theme of never going back. The person keeps trying to shake out of this situation, but it's clear his actions are irreversible. The cops eventually show up behind him, and this is his breaking point. The mask is removed, and we see a real man, and then a car crashes into him, and he dies. Another great video, most of these tier 1 videos are really good, so you should check them out. Tool Sober. I really don't even know where to start with this video because the artwork in it, it's by a man named Fred Sturt, and the artwork in it is just 
absolutely amazing. I think Fred passed away, so rest in peace to him, but he did an incredible job with his video. A lot of the art to me looks to be claymation, but there could be some CGI involved also. But anyway, we follow around these deformed, gray, alien-looking creatures in a sort of, like, small model house. And the way they move, it's pretty clear that these alien things have some sort of anxiety. Everything they do doesn't really make sense and they're always shaking and stuff. And my belief that is that this is like a metaphor for withdrawal because we're dealing with a song about addiction. Towards the end, there's this pipe that shows up and there's like these organs in it, which I assume is the liver, but I am no nurse. Also near the very end, we see a real human. So I think it's entirely possible that this whole thing is a metaphor for addiction. Definitely check this one out when you get time. Earl Sweatshirt, Earl. This is a pretty iconic one at this point as this is one of those videos that uh, really like took Odd Future into the mainstream. In the video, Earl invites a bunch of his friends over to his house and they start putting things into a blender. Pills, pretty much every illicit substance you can think of, they throw in there, blend it, Everyone has a sip, and this is when things start to get crazy. A dude throws up, one goes out to skateboard and face plants, there's blood everywhere, teeth are falling out, people are throwing up, one member starts convulsing on the ground and foam starts coming out of his mouth. Pretty much this is just one violent video uh, with a lot of gross stuff, but there's a reason it's in tier 1, it's nothing too disturbing. Mr. Bungle, quote unquote, slash Travolta. First thing I'd say about this video is about the music itself. It just sounds like a circus act gone completely wrong. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I think the music is actually very good and definitely ties into the video. So a couple comments on the video said it is about the cult of Scientology. And I literally know nothing about Scientology. Some people call it a re religion. Other people call it a cult. Uh, I don't like to assume anything, so you can make your own interpretations. But anyway, we see a bunch of dolls hanging and a bunch of flashing lights pop up. Then we see someone hanging from a life-taking device, I'll call it. After we see that person, we see a bunch of people hanging on that thing. It then cuts to this creepy dude doing things on railroad tracks and a playground. Then the people that are hanging on the life-taking device start fluttering around like they're having some sort of seizure. After that, we go to this nightclub where a bunch of weird people are wearing masks and people start pulling out weapons like hatchets and hacksaws and pretty much everything you could consider a weapon. Ultimately though, nobody acts with the weapons. After all that jazz in the nightclub with these weird masks and disturbing imagery, we see people hanging from life-taking devices on street lights, and these people actually look dead. They're not having seizures like the people from earlier. This was just a really weird video, not disturbing at all for me, but it was just weird and I don't really know the narrative of it. Tobacco Streaker. This one starts with some weird dude with really long hair and dark black eyes and he just looks really tired talking about his massage parlor on a commercial on TV. He talks about how he's happy to see you and has you come in and you enter the doors to his massage parlor. So at this point the video becomes first person. We enter the massage room and see a guy face down ready to get his massage but in the corner of the room is a woman with her back turned to you. She slowly turns around and the guy gets up and both of them rush you like they're about to shake you down. I forgot to mention these people are also wearing very creepy masks. Throughout the video, a bunch more of these masked people come out and they keep assaulting us for no reason. Finally make it to another room, only to find out more masked people are there, and then they put a gas mask on us as we fall asleep. We end up at some sort of party for psychopaths, but we actually see a normal guy there. He's an unmasked normal dude, but he looks absolutely terrified. This whole trip finally ends. And at the end, we see the same long-haired, dark-eyed dude from the beginning saying he takes his massages very seriously, and he hopes to see us again soon. <sighs> this one was so weird, but I can't say I didn't enjoy it. I also really like this video. 12-foot ninja ain't that a bee. A bunch of stuff happens at the beginning of this video, and I'm not really sure why. It's just about some dude washing a car for some guy and then he does a bunch of other tasks for this guy but it's not really relevant to the rest of the video we're then introduced to a new character which i can't describe in any other words other than what a discord mod would look like 
he's on his computer and he sees a notification for the new 12 foot ninja album and he clicks on it it inspires him to start his own band but he eventually gets kicked out of the band because they don't like him i guess so he gets really jealous of the band eventually because they're successful and he's not and he sends him this message to which the whole band sees and they don't take very kindly to this message so one bandmate literally gathers like this secret agent and finds this discord mods information and we find out the discord mods name is tim so they get a bunch of weapons and decide to go to tim's house but only one bandmate is actually going to harm Tim here in a second. One bandmate goes to Tim's house and confronts him, and then Tim turns into this large sloth goony like looking creature, and the whole thing is just like a comic book fight where they fight each other. Eventually, the bandmate wins by snapping Tim's neck, but after this whole comic book like interaction, we transition into real life. The setting is different and this whole room is completely covered in blood. The bandmate brutally kills the troll while the troll is sleeping with a hatchet. He grinds up his body parts in this meat grinder. And after all this happens, we see a burger flopped onto a grill at a barbecue. Then everybody at the barbecue is talking about how good the meat is, so we can all assume they cooked up Tim and everyone at this picnic is eating Tim. The video ends with a message saying be kind to each other. As we can see, if people aren't kind to each other, uh, then some people get turned into meat when it's really not that serious of an issue. Justice Stress. This is a pretty popular and iconic music video nowadays. I believe it got banned in France actually. But it follows a bunch of younger men around wearing these black hoodies with a cross on their backs. And they just go around and harass people for no reason. They break cars, break people's possessions. At one point, they go into a bar and whack a bartender with a glass. Eventually, they assault a police officer. And at the very end of the video, they come for the cameraman to sort of show that nobody is safe. From what I read, this video was... Uh, sort of to raise awareness of like gang violence and such so I'm not really sure why this got banned in France if it's this relevant but the video definitely strengthened its message Marilyn Manson Saint as you can expect with a Marilyn Manson video you're gonna have some pretty weird things happening it begins with Marilyn lying on his bed he's got blood on his chest and then right after that we see he's actually harming himself with a razor blade he uses the Bible as an ashtray and also snorts some of that white stuff if you know what I'm saying not that white stuff the other powdery white stuff after all this he does kith with a woman shout out to wendigoon for that word i'll be using that a lot throughout this video the rest of the video is literally just like a p word video i really don't know what else to say i can't really get into detail because youtube wouldn't like that at the end he starts blowing chunks into the toilet and that's pretty much it for this one Darren Gray Obscure. This one's really weird and uncanny. As the band sings, and they have this sort of uh, uncanny aesthetic, like all their faces are painted white and they're wearing contact lenses, and they just look purposefully weird for the video. As they sing, we see like these four pale women surrounding this person in the middle and this person has like a model figure of a baby's head as all of this happens a bunch of like flashing disturbing imagery appears sometimes with these videos it's hard to see what all is going on because some stuff like flashes so fast but eventually one of these pale women is walking through this liminal space in like this empty terrain and she finds this tree and on that tree is the baby's head from earlier that I mentioned. Then she decides to eat the baby's head so she's just like and it starts bleeding and she just eats the whole head which I can't say I expected but this is a disturbing music video's iceberg. Also right after this some guy decides to rip his heart out and eat it so maybe the band has some sort of fetish I'm not really sure. But all these occurrences of people eating their body parts and other human beings uh, the band leader seems to be affected by this because every time like a bite happens he starts vomiting So that's pretty much where this video ends portal curtain So this video starts with a camera entering through a door and then we see this stage But in front of the stage are all these white figures that look like ghost costumes at first I thought they were corpses, but we'll figure what out what they are in a little bit then on stage in front of these figures these giant black creatures which are displayed right here 
they start playing violins and then we see they're playing violins with bones then we figure out these white hooded people who i thought were corpses are actually just more of these black figures these giant black figures decide to put on a sort of puppet show uh, with a guy that looks like Scream, and we never really figure out if the guy is real or if he's actually a puppet, but I'm pretty sure he's real. He's eventually put in this small house-looking box similar to the Toll video, and this giant bird is put in a room with him, and he's sort of startled by this, but the bird disappears. Oh, the puppet strings get cut, and we do figure out he's real. He's not a puppet, so my apologies for that. The strings are then turned into a life-taking device, and he gets stuck in it. He actually is able to take that device off and he starts walking through a terrain that looks to be hell. He finds that same giant bird at the top of a cliff, but as he goes to interact with it, the bird flies away and the puppet man falls off the cliff. Puppet man ends up back in his house, but it starts tremoring and it grows teeth. The camera goes into the mouth of the house and just goes down, 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 down. And eventually the song ends showing the same door that we entered from at the beginning. So I really have no idea what this video means either, but it was pretty cool. Cradle of Filth Babylon AD. This starts with a woman washing the men's bathroom and she eventually sees a camera sitting on one of the stall toilets. Curious, she grabs it and it starts to play footage of a bunch of younger people running from something in a hallway. As the video progresses, creepier things start to happen. We enter a door and see a bunch of kids like on their knees like this is something out of the movie Salo. We see every kid is assigned a number like they're some sort of subject and they're not even a human. Eventually we see the same woman that is holding the camera actually in the video wearing the number one. We find out she is one of these cult victims as well. It shifts back to the woman actually being in the stall and we can't figure out if this is some sort of flashback or if the woman is actually in this cult or if she's having nightmares or what. But this music video really reminded me of what I know about the movie Salo. Uh, it, a lot of the scenes looked similar to that movie, so I'm sure there's some inspiration there. D.Y.E. Fantasy among the disturbing things genre, this video is pretty popular at this point. This video is actually animated and a bunch of teenage kids decide to sneak into an indoor pool for the night. The kids start doing typical teenage stuff, drinking beer, doing stuff like that, and one girl doesn't really want to be a part of it. One couple starts kissing at the edge of the pool and then they do some kith stuff. Another guy is sitting next to the innocent girl and he tries to kiss her but she doesn't want that, so she jumps into the pool to sort of escape from him. She sees something coming out of her body and she gets really freaked out, so she hops out of the pool, only to see the couple from before connected by some sort of weird tentacle. The weird couple turns into full-on monsters and they literally eat the dude that tried to kiss the innocent girl and there's just blood everywhere. So the innocent girl is freaked out. She tries to escape out the window first, but then dives to the bottom of the pool and actually finds an opening to a different world and it leads her into this cave. When she gets out, she finds a light, but it ends up being too much for her. Her eyes start shooting beams and she starts shaking and then she just falls over dead. So apparently this song is about losing your childhood innocence. It's definitely one way to portray that, I guess, but art is art. The prodigy smack my beat up. This starts with a first person point of view and it starts with a guy doing everyday tasks about getting ready, he gets dressed, he brushes his teeth and does stuff like that. He drinks some liquor and then he does some D words. And then he heads out the door. After this he goes to a club and gets some takeout after doing like five shots of whiskey. And what's interesting about this video is we start to see the world from his perception like we can see how everything is disoriented but we know we have the morals to know what he's doing is wrong he starts harassing a bunch of women that clearly do not want to be touched and then eventually it ends in a fight at the club after this he goes to the bathroom to blow chunks and then he also heads into the stall to shoot up some h word after he does the h word everything is uber distorted now like we can barely see what's happening he does this whole cycle a bunch more till he finally goes to another club and finds an exotic dancer to take home she goes in the car with him and when they get home they do some kith stuff and after that the girl leaves and so does the video i thought there was gonna be like some sort of message to like 
<laughs> stay sober or something at this video, but it just ends as if it were a completely normal night. I guess it's to show that some people get away with these harassment things or something. I don't really know. And finally, M.I.A. Born Free. This is directed by Romain Garvis, which is the same guy that directed the Justice video. U.S. soldiers approach an apartment complex, and they start just going into people's rooms and beating them for no reason. They keep doing this until they find a redhead kid about my age, like 20 years old or so. He's taken from his room and put on a bus with a bunch of other redhead kids. At first, I thought this video was going to be about, like, Americans not realizing the trouble civilians in, like, third world countries go through, like, how the US Army might go and, like, attack civilians in, like, Pakistan or something, and, like, I thought this was going to be a video to show what it would be like if that happened in America, but as it progressed, I'm not really sure that was the point of it. Anyway, all these redhead kids are being taken to some sort of camp, and three other redheads are found on the street trying to save their redhead friends, but they come up short. The bus is then taken to a desert that is filled with landmines, and one of the officers yells at all the kids to get off the bus. Eventually, all the kids are put on a line, hands behind their backs and on their knees. Then we see one of the kids looks to be at least less than 10 years old. He's like eight years old. One of the officers tells the kids to start running across the minefield or else, and he means this because he puts a gun to the eight-year-old's head and then shoots him. Disturbed by this, obviously all the kids start running knowing their fate, and mines start exploding all around the kids. Some kids just completely blow up like there's nothing left. Our main character from earlier, the first redhead kid, takes a different path and runs the opposite way to try to escape this prison he's in. He falls down and is beaten by three different officers. Eventually, at the end of the video, the camera zooms in on one of the officers and his face looks like it's just full of regret, but we will never know. After this, it fades to black. That is the end of tier 1, and I have to say pretty much every video on this tier I really enjoyed and I would encourage you guys to watch if you were at all interested by that part. Now we are moving on to tier 2, the surface, it is displayed on the screen. Head crusher, common nonsense. A blonde woman is shown in front of a mirror with some blood coming out of her face. And then right outside her window, we see two more girls covered in blood, but all of them are smiling and they don't really seem to care about the blood. So the brunette woman outside decides to take a bite of the blonde woman's wrist, and then the other woman sitting there decides to take a bite of her own wrist, and blood is just spewing everywhere now. While all this happens, they're all just giggling like nothing weird's happening. Three girls go into a building, they start breaking stuff, and then they literally just fountain blood out of one mouth into the other. The brunette woman finds a big knife and then they all get excited. She rushes into the blonde woman and stabs her right in the stomach. Basically, these women just harm each other and they have fun doing it. They're just like a bunch of masochists. But I think the grossest part of the video for me is when one woman takes a razor blade and just digs and digs into her skin for a really long time. Anyway, they vandalize the building a little bit more and then they ride scooters across the street to their home like nothing ever happened. People in the comments said this video is about how we sort of use violence is entertainment nowadays and that's why these girls are laughing when they're literally getting stabbed and doing stuff with blood. I guess it's their way of showing desensitization through a video. Flying Lotus, ready or not. This video is animated and we see Flying Lotus in a haunted house type mansion and he's all tied up and captured. And then this dude pops up with an ax and I have to say I cracked the hell up when I saw this guy. Then he decapitates Flylo and as I was watching this, in my head, I was like, there's no way David Firth didn't direct this video. And I checked the description, and of course, the Salad Fingers man himself, David Firth, directed this. Basically, throughout the video, we see a bunch more weird stuff happen. People, like, grow intestines out of their mouth and stuff. I would just watch this one yourself. I really can't do the animation justice. And there's no narrative, it's just a bunch of weird nightmare fuel imagery. Las Passage, say, say, say. This starts off inside of a house, but there's a certain ambience in the atmosphere to where we can tell not everything is quite right. A guy finds a picture of some older folk and he puts black tape over their eyes. 
He walks into a bedroom and stands over a bed that doesn't have anyone in it. The camera then shows the kitchen, which includes a paper towel full of teeth, so we kind of know where this video is going now. Feathers start to float all over the house, and as the camera moves into the living room, we know why. There is a man trying to kill his wife with a pillow by suffocating her, and for a second she's able to escape because she takes a pencil off a table and stabs her husband in the leg but she doesn't completely succeed in running away because the man grabs a giant metal pool and then we see blood splatter all over the window and it runs down her leg and we know she's dead now. After this, the man stands over the woman's body looking like he regrets what he did, but then he goes on to do something a little more disturbing. He starts positioning her body in ways that looks like she's still alive, like he sleeps in bed next to her dead body propped up and he's just acting like this is completely normal. Eventually he realizes he has to do something to get rid of this before the feds catch up to him. So we see him looking through an anatomy book and he has a bunch of like scalp tools and just surgeon tools in general with him. To get rid of the remains he drains the blood down the sink takes out all of her organs, and he prepares himself a feast. And I don't just mean your typical Sunday dinner. This man prepared a whole-ass Thanksgiving feast of heart, liver, intestines, everything. He's eaten it all. Every time he eats her, though, he throws up, so I guess he has some sort of remorse if you want to look at it that way. Anyway, the video ends with his wife looking over him, and he's laying in what looks like a hospital bed. So I'm not sure what this means, but I didn't know where this video was going to go until I saw the feathers, so props to the director. Health, we are water. This was directed by Eric Warheim, who is the same one who did the streaker video from Tier 1. It shows a blonde woman running through a snowy wooded forest away from her killer, which is a giant obese man wearing nothing but his tidy whiteies. Eventually the girl falls down and he stands over her. He grabs his machete and he's ready to strike, but the girl, who looks like she's about to give up, stabs him right in the junk. Blood starts pouring out of his undies and he just screams for like 10 minutes straight. The woman takes his machete, goes chop, and blood is just flowing out of Undie Boy like he's a fountain. The camera zooms out, we see our protagonist chopped off his head, and then she takes off her blonde wig to reveal she has short black hair. This video did a great job of just turning a three hour horror movie into like a three minute clip. Crystal Castle's Magic Spells. This is a short video, like it's not even a minute long, but we do see a few disturbing things in it. Basically, we see a person tied up in this person's garage, and this person's just living normal everyday life doing yard work outside. He then comes in, and we see the body moves a little bit so we know the person's not dead, but then the yard work man comes, grabs a giant cinder block, and drops it on the person's head, and the whole video is shot on this crappy camera to make it look like it's some sort of snuff film. The guy leaves after he drops the cinder block, and that's literally it. That's the whole video. Black strobe, back from beyond. A man drives around and just drives and drives. He goes and sees a deer on the road, and then he goes to some convenience stores. But when night falls, he finally arrives at his destination, which is this woman's house, and the woman has a husband. He breaks into the house, confronts the husband, and it fades to black, but the next time we see the camera, there's a little splotch of blood on it, so that's just a nice little detail to tell us this husband is probably dead. After this, he finds the woman he was looking at before upstairs, and she starts screaming in fear. She runs downstairs to see her husband dead, and after this, she freaks out, runs outside, tries to get in her car, but can't. Instead, she starts running through the woods and ends up at this abandoned house. She doesn't know the killer is following her, so she goes down into the basement of that, and the killer follows her down there. And when we go down to the basement, we actually see two women in there, so we can tell this killer knows exactly what he's doing. One of the women is killed. We see blood splatter along the wall. The other one sits in her chair, head down and in despair, and on a curtain next to her, spelled out in blood are the words Black Strobe. Skinny Puppy, Warlock. Before I talk about the video, I just have to say this song is awesome. It reminds me of like a super tuned up massive attack. Anyway, this video is just a compilation of a bunch of gory, disturbing horror films, so I don't think it's like an original director's cut or anything. Anyway, we see some things like an eyeball popping out. We see a person's head getting cut horizontally, like I literally mean like chopped in half like this. 
and it's basically just a bunch of gore stuff for movies. I'm not sure what horror movies they are because I'm not really a uh, super junkie in horror movies. Uh, but if you know about this video and you know what movies are featured, let me know in the comments. Ronaldo and the Loaf, Songs for Swinging Larva. This video is quite the trip. It starts off with a little kid playing with his toy truck and some of his army men. Then it zooms in on his mom who's washing some dishes at the sink and preparing dinner. And we see in all the glasses she has over there is a bunch of blood. The woman then takes a toilet plunger and shoves it into the kid's face. And obviously the kid doesn't take very kindly to this. He's pretty upset. So he crawls to the window and then he's taken by some weird eccentric older man. This man is actually a much better father figure than the mother ever was. They start playing drums together. They do some other activities together and just seems like they're having a pretty good time overall. Eventually, the mom comes back and she's represented by this demented looking cookie monster thing. The kid escapes his mother cookie monster thing and ends up in this industrial looking playground that reminds me of Krabby World. Eventually, we come back to the kitchen and the mother turns around and we see she's actually a man. When she turns around, she tries to grab her son, but he teleports into nothingness. So I have absolutely no idea what this video is about, what the purpose of it is, but it is what it is. Basement Torture Killings, Severed Head Fellatio. This video starts off by giving us a description of what snuff is, so this whole video is basically a fake snuff film. The band is shown in a disused basement, and they have a woman locked up down there. They use a knife and a drill to attack her, and they start pulling out her organs. After that, they eat the organs. Then another woman is shown getting her finger chopped off, and the band has these voodoo dolls of these women that they captured to sort of foreshadow what they're gonna do to them. At the end, another woman is shown outside sitting in a chair, and the three band members are lined up in front of her, so she knows she doesn't have a very nice fate at the end of her life. Serge and Charlotte Gainsbourg, Lemon, I don't think I can say that word. Interestingly, this is the first time I've come to a video that doesn't actually exist on the internet, and for good reason. This whole song caused a scandal that dealt with another word for predator. People thought this song was like glamorizing both predators and the word in the song. Charlotte was only 13 when she sang this song, and to this day she says she consented to the whole thing, but she was only 13 at the time, so the whole thing is still really creepy because she was a child at the time. Basically, the song is about lovers like that, where one is like 13 and the other is not 13, and people thought the song was autobiographical. So the reason the video isn't available is because the Wikipedia page says Charlotte is shown in a suggestive manner, and it's literally borderline illegal. She was literally a child at the time of recording this video, so I have no idea what Serge was thinking. I don't know how people defend him. I just think the whole situation of this song is gross. Job for a Cowboy, Tarnished Gluttony. This is probably my favorite music video in this tier. I thought it was really interesting. It starts off with a man carrying a dead child through a field, and he enters the forest. And I believe the child is the man's son, but we never figure this out. He eventually sets the kid down in the forest because he sees blood along a fallen tree, so he follows that blood trail. He starts ripping at the fallen tree's bark and finds a squid inside of it. He then returns to his child's body, grabs an X-Acto knife, and is about to carve into his child's chest. The kid, who we think is dead, eventually starts coughing, so we know he's actually alive. And the dad is disturbed by this for some reason, so then he cuts right into his son's chest. He rips the kid's chest in half, pulls out all of his organs, grabs the squid from earlier, and puts the squid into his son's body. He then sews his son's skin back up. After that, he takes the kid to a beach and sets him down. After that, he walks into the ocean, lets his kid float away, and then he just stands there as his kid sinks underwater. That's pretty much where this ends, and a very interesting thing that a YouTube commenter pointed out is that the dad actually has gills on his neck, so we find out that he's some sort of human-fish hybrid. So perhaps by putting the squid into his son's body, he thought that might be a way of reviving him. That is the end of Tier 2. We are moving on to Tier 3, The Deep Waters. 
Shoo shoo, dear god, I hate myself. This begins with a woman sitting down, and we see her putting her fingers into her mouth, and by that point we know exactly where this is going. Keep in mind, I do absolutely terrible with vomit. I hate vomit, it's the grossest thing ever to me. Anyway, she makes herself throw up for a full three minutes, <laughs> while the guy next to her just eats a candy bar. And to be completely honest with you, I had to just skip forward a couple times in this video because I don't do well with vomit whatsoever. Necro, I need D words. This begins with an H junkie on the street talking to some dealers. He talks about how H should be legal in America since it's legal in England, and he just goes on this whole rant to them. Eventually we see Necro rapping in his room in front of his uncle and probably his uncle's friend, and they're both shooting up while Necro is just rapping over this surprisingly calm beat. I read some places that this is Necro's real uncle and he really shot up in this video, but I'm not completely sure. I do believe this is definitely Necro's real uncle, but I don't know if the substances in the video are real. If they are, this makes it way more disturbing, and I'm assuming it is since it's on tier 3. If everything in this video was fake, we would have probably seen this in tier 1. When Othrix point never, still life. When I saw this for the first time, like, it disturbed the hell out of me. And not the way things like vomit or gore does, it used like liminal spaces and just really unnerving imagery, like uncanny imagery that automatically affects the human mind no matter who you are. This video is actually a collection of images. Some of them are liminal spaces, others include disturbing imagery, and some of them are just downright disgusting. For example, we see a keyboard at the beginning of the video, and it's somewhat clean, not completely clean, but it's not too dirty. Then we see that same keyboard later, and there's just a ton of crap in it, like boogers and every human body substance you can imagine. It's just absolutely disgusting, and not, it was making me nauseous just looking at it. The video also flashes a bunch of furries and people dressed in these oversized anime girl outfits. And while I don't have anything against that, some of them are just super uncanny when you look at them for more than like 5 seconds. Everything about this video is so uncanny and unnerving and nauseating. And I think that's what makes this video the most disturbing one so far. It really screwed with my head and changed my mentality for the rest of this iceberg. Youth code consuming guilt. This whole video is basically just an experiment. There is a woman on a bed and there's a bunch of surgeon scientists around her. There's also a monkey in the lab with them. So the whole video is this effed up experiment and the woman like gets her eyes glued shut or something at some point. This is another one of those videos that has like so much distortion and flashing images that it's hard to tell what's going on. But I think basically what they're doing is making this woman as feral as they possibly can. That's pretty much it though, that's all I can make out of this. Luckily there was no animal abuse or else I would have been very pissed off. Rewake, it was beautiful, now it's sour. This entire video deals with these bloody pig fetuses. And throughout the entire video, they get destroyed in multiple ways. I'm talking tennis rackets, golf clubs, you get the point. The controversy here is that people that have watched the video don't know if it's real or not. The fetuses I'm talking about. To me, they didn't look real, but if they are, I don't know what the hell the band was thinking. Sodama, Gamora, Splatter, R Word. This video is basically just a bunch of P-word gore. I don't think it's real though, but literally that is the entire video. Other than when we see the band rapping, I'm pretty sure this is a horrorcore song, so it's like disturbing rap. At one point, a dude literally puts a match to his junk and almost burns it. Literally the last minute of the video is a dude beating his you-know-what right in front of the camera and he's all bloody and that goes on for like a whole minute. Nine Inch Nails, broken. This is pretty much a short film as it comes in to over 20 minutes long. And for a long time, people thought this whole video was a myth because 
Nine Inch Nails said it was so disturbing that they could never show it to the public. They talked about how brutal it was, and I guess some people just didn't believe of its existence. Eventually, years later, it surfaced on Vimeo, but it was taken down very quickly. Right now, it can only be found through archives or on a hidden link on the Nine Inch Nails website. I didn't personally watch the video, but I read up on the Wikipedia page on it, which described it in great detail. Essentially, it's a 20-minute fake snuff film about a guy being tortured. Throughout the video, the torturer uses scat, he r-words the victim, he even graphically pulls his teeth out. There are a ton of details I left out, but it's basically about a torturer torturing this guy for 20 minutes, and needless to say, there's a reason this video took a very long time to surface. Dying fetus, die with integrity. This is a very violent video, and there is a ton of gore in it. I literally don't even know what happens in this. There is just a bunch of violence, gore, uh, private parts are attacked. I'm sure some of this is assault slash R-word stuff, but luckily it is all fake. I hope. Cupid Kids, Ganja Poo Poo. When I saw the title of this, I sighed. I was so scared. I knew exactly what was coming. I almost didn't watch the video, but I did. And luckily I can say it's not that bad. Cause I don't think the poo in the video is real. Basically this whole song is just a silly song about a poo fetish. These girls smear poo all over their faces and they start doing kith stuff with poo smeared all over their bodies. But the poo just looks like chocolate pudding. I'm very certain it's not real, so I am able to breathe again. Smut peddlers, bottom feeders. I saw R.A. the Rugged Man is on this song, so I said to myself, I know who he is, and it can't be that bad if he's in it. Boy was I wrong. This video started with a lot of kith stuff. Nothing you wouldn't see in a p-word video though. But the most disgusting part comes about three quarters in, when a man and a woman are kissing, and all of a sudden they start decide to start throwing up all over each other. They throw up inside of each other's mouths and I'm just getting nauseous even thinking about this. After that a bunch of other lewd stuff happens and this video should really not be anywhere except P-Hub and maybe it shouldn't even be there either. Silencer, Sterile Nails, and Thunder Bowels. I was pretty scared to look this one up after seeing the word Thunder Bowels but I was very relieved by what I found. I am 90% sure the video for this song is literally all clips from the movie Begotten. If you don't know what movie that is, it's the like hour and a half long one that you can find on YouTube. It's all black and white and it's more like an art film than an actual movie and it's the one where like a creepy uncanny dude is sitting in a chair and he just like has like a black gooey heart. I think Spooky Rice and Mr. GG covered it, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, go check out their channels, and I'm sure they have something on Begotten there. That's pretty much it for this silencer video. Alright, that's the end of tier 3. There is a tier 4 and 5, but I'm not going to cover them in this video. I want to see your guys' thoughts first, and perhaps I'll cover them down the road. But the thing with me is I draw the line at real life stuff. Like, if there's any real gore in tier 4 or 5, I don't want to cover it. I don't want to be near it. However, if you guys really enjoyed this, and you really want to see tier 4 and tier 5, then possibly, just maybe, I'll stomach through it. I'll watch the tier 4 and 5 videos, and I'll conclude this iceberg in another video. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope to see you guys down the road. Really, really appreciate all the love lately. We're almost to 1,000 subscribers, which is amazing. And keep commenting, guys. I love interacting with you. It's amazing to have a community, especially after doing this for a little over three years now and actually get some love now. So thank you again. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. I hope you all have a great night. See you later.